That's what your board will look like if you've done everything right in the cab to start the aerial up. Okay? You walk back there and you don't see this lit up. You've probably forgotten one of your steps in the cab or maybe you don't have the park brake applied. Hot rigger on off. When you turn this switch on, you'll get the high idle to come up. You'll also hear an alarm. High idle will be canceled out if the water pump is engaged. So whenever the water pump is in service on this truck, the high idle for the aerial will be gone. We'll be running the aerial PTO off of whatever you're turning that uh, water pump at. The alarm is there for two reasons. To let anyone around the truck know that these outrigger beams are being deployed. And more importantly, to let the operator who's in charge of this setup operation remember to turn this switch off. Because if the water pump is engaged, you're not going to hear that high idle come up. But you'll hear the alarm. If we don't turn this switch off after outriggers are set, you will not be able to operate the area. There's, a, there's one switching valve underneath the, uh, underneath the tailboard of the truck. That's the diverter valve. It switches either to outrigger or to aerial. When it's on outrigger, it's not going to go to the aerial side. So get your, your outriggers deployed and then turn this switch off. Okay? In the center of the panel, we have a two-position momentary switch. Aerial override is on the top, outrigger override is on the bottom. But once this ladder is raised up out of the ladder bed where it's seated right now, yeah, it's seated in the bed, I can run my outriggers. If I raise the ladder up, I can no longer run outriggers automatically. Even if I turn this switch on and try to move these switches, nothing will happen. But if I wanted to make an outrigger movement with the ladder out of the bed, I could do it with the override. Of course, you hold that switch down. you got to continue to hold it. Now I can go over here and I can make an outrigger movement. That could be pretty dangerous, too. you got a big lever hanging out there, okay? Very simple rule. If the aerial is on this side of the truck, it's safe to move these outriggers, okay? But never move an outrigger that had the aerial over the top of it or in close proximity to it. Okay, overriding the aerial, push and hold this switch up. Right now this truck doesn't have any outriggers out or down. It doesn't care if it has any out or down with this aerial override. You can go up to the turntable and you can open the door up that's at your knees on that control panel and you can grab a hold of the ladder control valve and you can raise it up, rotate it, tip this truck over with the aerial override, okay? Why would you use that? In the event that the electric controls that are running the aerial fail while you're in operation, you could effectively operate the aerial with the manual valve at the turntable by using this override. It takes two people to tip the truck over, one down here and one guy up there. If that guy up there that's operating the aerial is getting into trouble or going the wrong way or something and you're overriding, you just let the switch go down here and it'll disable. So that, that's that's overriding the smart aerial control, yeah. right? That's yeah. what, uh, All the safeties and the smart stuff that are built into this truck, when you use that override, are gone. You could lower the ladder into the body. You could rotate it into the body. Those bad things could happen. Mm -hmm. it over. Mm -hmm. I'll show you how to override the aerial up at the turn table because there may be, you're right, there are safety limits up built into the truck where we won't allow you to go any lower than that. But you might need to go down maybe six more inches to, to be able to get to that window. And I'll show you how to do that without having two people involved. Any questions on these switches? Okay, how are we not extended light is on right now? Beams have not been deployed. When I move a beam out, you're going to see a change on the, on the light. That is as fast as that light will ever blink, okay? That's a rapid blinking light for the right front outrigger. That means that that outrigger beam is not stowed, okay? It's been moved out away from the body, and it is not fully extended. If I bring that jack down to the ground, now I have a slow blinking light. That beam is short jack. Okay. It's not fully out. And we have uh, identification markers on the beam. You see the red exposed? Okay. 
We've got the beam out far enough to be able to raise the aerial up about 45 degrees. But we're not going to give you any rotation capabilities right now. So when you move it out to the next color, then you're going to be able to use the aerial over that short outrigger within its safe reach limits. Once you exceed your reaching limit over a short outrigger, we'll disable you. Okay? We'll simply stop the aerial operations. We won't allow you to extend out any further. And we won't allow you to lower the ladder down any lower. But when it does disable, you can always retract it, you can always elevate it up. The higher you go with the aerial, the further you can extend over that short outrigger. The further the beam is out, the further you can extend over that short outrigger. When you set the truck up though, guys, if you can, always move the beams all the way out, the axe all down. That way you have no restrictions, okay? other than the rated loads. Now, the rated loads for the aerial, 1,000 pounds while not flowing water, 500 pounds while flowing water. And that's at any angle, any elevation, any extension. My beams are all the way out and all jacks are down. All four handle lights will be lit solid, okay? And the red outrigger not extended light will be out. That's the only time that outrigger not extended light will go out is when beams are fully deployed out and all four jacks are down on the ground. Now, I don't care if you're short jacked or not, you must have all four jacks on the ground supporting enough load to either turn that light on solid or make it blink slowly to operate the area. Okay, all four jacks must be on the ground. Okay, down here in the lower left hand corner is a high pressure filter, uh, which I forgot to mention back to the mechanics. Underneath the, the truck, uh, in close proximity to our main hydraulic pump, is a high pressure filter. And this light is connected to it. It's also connected to the return filter at the oil reservoir up high. When that light is on, stays on, that means that those filters need to be serviced. Okay? If it's on and you want to operate the aerial, that's okay. You can still operate the aerial. If there's enough restriction in those filters, uh, there's a bypass and it'll bypass that filter. Go ahead and operate it if you see that light on. In the cold winter months, it's not uncommon to see that light blink on and off a little bit. That's normal. That oil gets to operate the temperature. There's an hour meter at the top of the panel. This is counting aerial hours only. And it's not counting any hours when we sit here at an idle. It's only counting hours when that aerial is operating. Okay, so you get a real true count of aerial hours. Okay, any questions on the panel? We've got one more switch to talk about. The emergency backup pump. This is the momentary switch. And it's used to get the aerial stowed, to get the ladder out of the sky, get the outriggers up off the ground. Because something's broke, something ain't working on it. Your main hydraulic pump has failed you. I don't have an override anymore. I can't run that pump. Or the engine is taking a shit on you and it's not working. I can't turn my pump. Okay? That's when we use the emergency backup system. I'm going to turn the engine, uh, the engine off. And I have to have 12 volt power to operate this pump. That means I've got to have master battery switch on, ignition on, and that aerial power icon on. 